So today in this video, we're going to learn how if you see anybody you're coming up against, any opponent doing this type of behavior. Sit it down and walk away. Sit it down and walk away. And if you want to, if you think it will be beneficial to you, if you think it will be advantageous to your performance, you could zone in on right there where they start to get uncomfortable to help you think, feel and act better, but then to be detrimental to how your opponent thinks, feels and acts. People, welcome back to the Believe in Bruce channel, the channel where we look at anything to do with the head and heart. Positive psychology, performance psychology, mental health, well-being, body language. If any of this interests you, subscribe below now. Give me a thumbs up to support the channel, but also leave me your comments. Let me know what you think about the information I'm giving, but also if you've got any other body language assessments that you would like me to look into, connect with me on Twitter or Instagram and just send me a message about this is the person I want you to look at. This is why I think it'll be interesting. It gives us a little bit about the context just so I've got some information to go at. So we're going to be looking at the bottle trick here. Khabib versus Tony Ferguson. Is the fight going to go ahead? Will it be behind closed doors? What's your opinion? Let us know below. It'd be really interesting. In fact, I might do a video on that. There's a thing called the Hawthorne effect. How we act depends on the situation that we're in. When we, we are being observed, can massively alter our cerebral state, thus our performance. So when you go into a stadium, if you will, with nobody watching, oh, ho, ho, that'll be beautiful from a psychological perspective. So I got a load of questions and a load of thumbs up and, you know, real good feedback for my Khabib Tony Ferguson video. And thank you very much for that. And there was a lot of questions that were asking about the specifics of, well, why did he do this? And can you give us a little bit more about why he done that? So what I'm going to look at here is the bottle trick, the tell of Khabib that when Tony Ferguson said something, without Khabib even saying anything, you could see that he was irritated. You could see that he was uncomfortable. And remember, biology doesn't lie. This is not my opinion. Khabib's body action of this. Sit it down and walk away. It is unquestionable. It's undeniable. It is undubitably. Now that's a good word. Undubitably proof that he was irritated at that particular moment. And we're going to learn how you could utilize those tells from your opponent in any situation in life, fighting or outside, normal Joe public, in order to take control of that situation if it's advantageous for you. So remember, body language is a visible display of what's going on inside the head and the heart. What emotions we are feeling right at that time, our body lets us know. And if we are in tune with what we can see, this may be a partner, this may be somebody at work, this may be somebody in a team or an opponent, and all, you know, there's many variables, but all of them are applicable to body language. If you have got the skill to observe, then you can pick up on these type of things. We're gonna talk about my friend, the brain here. Yeah, the sympathetic nervous system, the limbic system. So what we've got is a threat. Now threats can come in millions of forms. Go and ask somebody if they fancy a drink, asking uh, for a pay rise, going for a job interview. Now all of these things, it doesn't have to be the saber tooth tiger, but all of them are perceived as a threat, which is really interesting. Now the threat doesn't have to be there. You know, a saber tooth tiger is in front of us, or we think of a saber tooth tiger, if it definitely, if the hippocampus has stored an emotional memory within there. But this is what you see with Khabib here. Now what Tony Ferguson does, is he offers some information, some narrative, that Khabib, undeniably, undeniably, absolutely undeniably feels a threat from. Remember the context for this first bit of body language is that Khabib and Ferguson have meant to have many fights before that all got cancelled or that just didn't come off for whatever reason. And what's really interesting here is that Ferguson goes at Khabib about, I hope you show, because some of the reporters asked him about, you know, he got stripped of the title. Ferguson's like, no, no, it's still here. I didn't get stripped of anything. And then he says, you know, he actually leans over and says to Khabib, I hope you turn up this time. We're keeping it savvy and we'll keep it a little classy. The hype is real. You better fucking be there, Khabib. I'm glad you showed up. Just sit it down and walk away. It's so what's interesting is that if that sentence didn't mean anything to Khabib, and again, what we've got here, remember, is a discomfort sign, is that you'll see Khabib move 
the bot. So, Khabib hears that narrative, it comes into the thalamus. Remember, the thalamus takes it to the cortex or the amygdala, repetition, so we all understand this. Because of Khabib's background, I believe, you know, I am an honourable man, I don't drink alcohol, I don't do this, I don't do that. It's not about money, it's about pride. I believe that rocks him to his core because of A, the man that he is, and also B, the man that he tries to portray. So because of all that loyalty and pride and honour and stuff, when Tony Ferguson says this, it attacks him right to his core. So that is a threat. The thalamus then throws that to the amygdala. The amygdala, because it is a threat, remember the amygdala is the seat of fear, the seat of emotion, people. Then starts talking to the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus, the organ secretion, for example, the pituitary gland, starts pumping that down to the adrenal glands. The hippocampus might be kicking in with memories that have got a tied emotion to that. And this is where you see the move of the bottle. Biology doesn't lie. And remember, that bottle didn't need to be moved, it had been there. It wasn't doing any harm, it wasn't blocking his vision, it wasn't making his desk untidy, let's say. But in that moment, he felt uncomfortable, he felt discomfort, that is undeniable, which is why he moved that bottle. And it's a form of rearranging, it's a form of tidying yourself up. Now, what I'd like you to do is, when, next time you're watching a boxing fight, or an MMA fight, or something where there's two people coming together, Boxing and MMA is really good, especially at the press conferences. You will notice that they go backwards and forwards, but then, and it's in the first few seconds when they stand up, and again, have a look on some videos, let me know some examples that you find, that you will see when they stand up, and you might recognise this in yourself when I'm about to explain it now, is that when people stand up before they come together, they'll start adjusting themselves. Yeah, they might have a jacket on and they'll flick the jacket or they might start just patting themselves down like this. This is us rearranging. We are slightly uncomfortable in that particular moment at that particular time. There's no need to rearrange or make ourselves presentable, yeah? But that's what you do. And this is what you see with Khabib, but also in all boxing fights and MMA fights, I'm always watching for these tells, these little flicks of the, the jacket or the wiping down of the thighs or something like this, because that gives an indication that there is discomfort there. And when there is discomfort, you could peel that back and dig that a little bit deeper to make them feel more discomfort if it was advantageous to your performance. So we know that we've got a little adrenaline surge there. We know that we've got a little discomfort because when Khabib moves the bottle, there you go. The body is telling us what's going on inside his head and his heart. His emotional baseline. There's stuff that Tony Ferguson says that actually is more barbed or sounds more rude or vulgar within the press conference. You know, like it's just damn rude towards Khabib. But that particular moment there, that's where I see where he was most bothered, where he was most uncomfortable when something attacked his pride, his honour, his Dagestani standing, if you will. And again, you may have done something like this before where you've been, I don't know, in your office and someone's coming in to see you and you'll start shuffling your pens around. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to get prepared and you put all your pens and then you may shuffle them to the other side and then you'll stack all your paper and put that down. You're getting prepared. There's that little bit of discomfort there because something's coming that you have a threat associated with. Now, a threat doesn't have to kill you, but it's something that if you don't get right, it could hurt you. At least that's the narrative that we pick up on. Like I said, the threat would have been exaggerated there because Khabib is under the spotlight. He's got the cameras, he's got the world's attention, he's got Dana White. This is a platform, you know, the, the fight's what, been rescheduled the fourth or fifth time, whatever it is. You know, it's not the first time they're meant to come together, but all the world's population from the MMA community, or a lot of them, were actually watching this fight. So again, that would have heightened that amygdala response. That would have heightened that fight or flight reaction. So when Tony Ferguson says that, that's where we get that reaction. So why am I telling you this? Well, again, if you're in a fight situation or you have got an opponent, you can do all the training that you want. And again, I'm not saying don't do training, but you've got a huge opportunity over here to give you that competitive advantage to get you into that first place. If winning is all you're interested in, by watching what your opponents do and then how they react to certain information. If there is discomfort, then maybe you should think about utilizing what was just said at that particular point a little bit more. And it doesn't guarantee the win at all. It doesn't guarantee. But what you can't deny is this action for Khabib was a definite sign of discomfort. So you know in that particular moment that he didn't like it. That particular moment it wasn't welcome. That particular moment it was unhelpful to his performance because an autonomous body reaction come out of there.
that give you all the signals that you needed to know. So again, just a quick short video on one specific thing that a lot of people are asking about. If you have got to think more, you know, specific instances of any fighters that you would like me to look into, then just let me know below. But remember to subscribe, give us a thumbs up for the channel. And again, if there is any direct questions, connect with me on my Twitter or my Instagram where just send us a direct message and I will look at the best ones where I'll turn into a video. And if you are interested in body language, mental health or performance psychology, anything to do with the head and heart, on a Thursday night now at 7 p.m., I'm running my Thursday thought, at 7 p.m. GMT that is. So if you'd like to come along, again, I'm getting people to ask questions out there, so I'm picking some questions, come prepared for them, but then at the end of the show, I'm just throwing it out there for some quick fire answers. So if this is something that interests you and you do want to connect and maybe share best practice, then 7 p.m. on a Thursday, Bruce's Thursday thought, it'd be great to see you there. But more importantly than anything else, believe in Bruce. Remember to be kind to yourselves and each other.